Frankfurt, and we are Arabic students from Hungary, from the University of Pécs, and now studying uh, at the University Pablo de la Vida in Sevi, Spain. Lecture Introduction to Sociology, Lecture Dr. Maria Jose da Pino Esparo. Uh, we present first the author Harriet Martinet, then we are going to read the second chapter. How to observe, and uh, finally, we will add some comments to it. Um, about uh, Harriet Martinez's life, um, so she she sense of her own remarkable life led her to recount it and to arrange that the autobiography be published after her death in 1876. Martin was born of uh, Huguenot ancestry in Norwich, England, in uh, 1902. Her father was a manufacturer, and uh, her mother's family were, ironically, uh, sugar refiners. The progressive in Italian Martinez saw um, to it that all their children, boys and girls alike, were well and equally educated. Um, by the time she was 15, Martine was, in her own words, becoming a political economist without knowing it. And she had already read uh, Thomas Malthus and had begun to think seriously in uh, sociological and political modes. Um, she was, in fact, among the first uh, sociologists, um, though not much uh, recognized in standard histories of that uh, discipline. Um, by the time she was 16, she was forced to face and uh, deal with increasing deafness, uh, which she described as very noticeable, very inconvenient, and excessively painful. Uh, she thought herself how to manage her handicap so that she could take in what she needed in unobtrusive ways. Um, after her father died, Martinez supported herself by writing, writing mostly popular journalism with a political economic guest. Uh, her first successes were her illustrations of uh, political economy, and this consisted of 24 stories that illustrated for a popular audience uh, the ideas of Thomas Malthus, James Mill, David Ricardo, and uh, Adam Smith. Um, they appeared in monthly installments and sold more copies at the time than the novels of uh, Charles Dickens. And uh, she earned enough to be able to move to London in 1832. Um, the illustrations include her earliest attacks on uh, slavery, along with the uh, anti slavery articles published in the monthly repository, a Unitarian Critical Journal. She built her arguments on two grounds, the immorality of slavery and its economy inefficiency. The fourth story in uh, illustrations, Demerara, exposes the intense human suffering that uh, results from uh, irritational slave systems that waste both capital and uh, labor. Between uh, 18 uh, 34 and uh, 36, Martin uh, traveled uh, through the United States and uh, she made lasting friends among the um, transcendentalists uh, and uh, anti slavery factions in uh, Boston. Um, emulation and uh, controversy followed her uh, everywhere, um, society in America like um, Alexis de Tocqueville's um, better known work, uh, described and uh, interpreted many features of uh, North American behavior, institutions, and uh, daily life. Uh, anticipating uh, Max Weber, uh, Martine argued that moral values underwent social institutions, and in the United States, the institution of slavery uh, made a mockery of uh, American stated ideas of uh, freedom. In the chapter, Morals of Slavery, she uh, reiterated uh, and uh, destroyed one by one the pro-slavery arguments that were promoted in the United States, 
and uh, question whether social virtues are uh, possible in a society of which injustice is the uh, primary characteristic. Her uh, critical mood was uh, ironic rather than outrage. Um, on slave, slave quarters, uh, for example, she wrote, I could not marvel at the amount for violence under the army provocations to which they are liable in their homes, their rooms dirty, their property wasted, their plants frustrated, their inf infants slighted, themselves uh, deluded by artifices. Um, their single virtue was uh, forbearance for the inherent injustice of the system extinguishes all other and uh, nourishes a whole harvest of false morals toward the rest of society. In plan, harsh language that was extraordinary for her time, she described the sexual uh, degradation of women, both slave and free, the damage to all children, the uh, farting of uh, conscience and uh, behavior, and the society ruling from uh, hypocrisy, uh, suspicion and restriction of uh, liberty. Not even New England escaped her explosive uh, critique as she described about the uh, free people of color and youth there. Um, in 1939, Martin, uh, 1839, Martin became um, chronically ill and uh, later she was uh, housebound. British slavery and apprenticeship had ended. Uh, but Martin did not allow uh, invalidism to hinder her fight to end slavery in the United States. Um, she wrote that despite many bodily troubles, I earned uh, lots of money for the American abolitionists uh, by uh, fancy work. Uh, she kept up her anti slavery writing until uh, the American Civil War, as English uh, correspondent for the American anti-slavery standard, um, and she continued her uh, social and economic research, the basis for a continuous flow of uh, anti-slavery articles. As always, her moral principles uh, infused uh, her writing, uh, which reveals an acute observer and critic uh, of the politics of slavery and anti-slavery in the United States. Like her uh, contemporary, uh, Joseph uh, Starch, uh, she saw the connections between uh, slavery in the colonies and uh, the uh, working class uh, oppression at home. Even though she had uh, objections uh, against as well as um, agreements with the British um, elite artists, um, she too, like Sturge, uh, favored immediate rather than gradual emancipation and she re rejected her. Um, yeah, full uh, last say for economic uh, philosophy and uh, strongly argued uh, governmental action to end chattel slavery, wage slavery, and uh, the, um, class uh, oppression. Um, Martin's important writings include, in addition to those already described, her retrospect of Western travel. Uh, another book about the United States, a novel, Deal Book, and an account of the history and practice of uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, Eastern life, um, present and past. Her journalism always pointed accessible, intelligent, um, and uh, socially conscious, interpreted the politics and the society of her time for a wide um, leadership. Um, in 1831, she disclaimed uh, Unitarianism, uh, liberal as it is, in favor of uh, free thinking. Um, later, she published an abridged translation of August Kant's um, course, The Philosophy Positive. Um, she embraced positive science as the foundation of a new morality. Her own life uh, exemplifies the feminism that uh, infuses all her work, no matter its uh, topic. Harriet Martin was uh, extraordinary, uh, both as a Victorian uh, woman and uh, influential abolitionist uh, writer. Um, Martin published her 
uh, book uh, how to observe morals and manners in uh, 1838 and um, the book was perhaps the first uh, sociological um, methodological text uh, Martina is noted for her um, progressive uh, politics and in his writing he presented feminist soci sociological perspectives and uh, addressed neglected topics such as uh, marriage, children, family life, religious life and uh, race relations. Later Martina translated the works of uh, um, August Kant who um, coined the term so sociology um, also um, known today as the mother of uh, sociology, Martine was one of the first sociologists to develop a method and a methodology for studying social life. Uh, now we are going to um, read from uh, Martine's uh, book, uh, which is titled uh, How to Observe. Um, and this chapter uh, is titled as uh, Moral. Requisites. I respect knowledge, but I do not despise ignorance. They think only as their father stood, worship as they worship, they do no more, Rogers. He was alive to all that was enjoyed wherever he went, and all that was in the world's words. Uh, the traveller, being furnished with the philosophical requisites uh, for, the for the observation of morals and manners, firstly, with a certainty of what it is that he wants to know, secondly, with principle which may serve as a rolling point and test of his observations, thirdly, with, for instance, a philosophical and definite instead of a popular and vague notion about the origin of human feelings of right and wrong, fourthly, and with a settled conviction uh, that prevalent virtues and vices are the result of the gigantic general influences is yet not fitted for his object uh, if certain moral requisites be wanting in him. An observer, to be perfectly accurate, should be himself perfect. Every prejudice, every moral perversion dims or distorts whatever the, the eye looks upon. But as we do not wait to be perfect before we travel, we must content ourselves with discovering in order to in or... <laughs> in order uh, to avoid us that will make our task uh, hopeless and how we may put uh, ourselves in a state to learn at least something truly. We cannot suddenly make ourselves a great deal better than we have been for a, such an object uh, as observing morals and manners. But by clearly ascertaining what it is that the most commonly or the most grossly appreciate is foreign observation, we may put a check upon our spirit of prejudice and carry with us uh, restoratives of, of temper and spirits which may be of essential service to us in our task. Uh, the observer must have uh, sympathy and his sympathy must be untrammeled and unreserved. If a traveler uh, be a geological, geological uh, inquirer, he may have a heart as hard as the rocks he shivers and yet success in his uh, immediate objects. If he be a student of the fine arts, he may be as silent as a picture and yet gain his ends. If he be a statistical investigator, he may be as abstract as a column of figures and yet learn the, uh, what he wants to know. But an observer of morals and manners uh, will be liable to deception at every turn if he does uh, not find his way to hearts and minds. Nothing was uh, ever more true than that, as face answers to face in water, so is the heart of man. To the traveller, there are two meanings uh, in this wise saying, both worthy of his uh, best attention. <coughs> it means that the action of the heart will meet a corresponding action, and that the nature of the heart will meet a corresponding nature. Openness and warmth of heart will be greeted with openness and warmth. This is one truth. 
Hard, uh, generous or selfish, pure or gross, gay or sad, will understand and therefore be likely to report off only their like. This is uh, another truth. There is the same human heart everywhere, their universal growth of mind and life, uh, ready to open to the sunshine of sympathy, flourishing in the uh, enclosures of cities and blossoming wherever dropped in the wilderness, but folding up when uh, touched by cheer and dropping in gloom. Uh, as well might uh, the earth king go, on, go and play the florist in the groves and plains of the tropics, as an uh, unsympathizing uh, man render an account of society. It will all turn to stubble and shapeless rigidity before his eyes. Uh, there is the same human heart everywhere, and if the traveler uh, has a good one himself, he will presently find this out, whatever may have been uh, his first at home, of uh, checks to his uh, sympathy from difference of education objects in life. There is no place where people do not uh, suffer and enjoy, where love is not the high festival or life, uh, where birth and death uh, are not uh, obsessions of emotion, where parents are not proud of their boy children, where thoughtful minds do not uh, speculate upon uh, two eternities, where in short there, there is uh, not broad ground on which any two human beings may meet and uh, and clasp hands if they have but unsophisticated hearts. Uh, if men uh, have not sympathy, there is no point of the universe, none so wide even the Mahomedan bridge of over the bottomless pit where he can meet uh, with his fellow. Such uh, an one is indeed uh, floundering in the bottomless pit with only the shadows of men ever flitting about him. I have maintained uh, elsewhere what will well uh, be repetition uh, that an American merchant who had made several voyages to China dropped a remark by his uh, on fireside on the narrowness which causes uh, us to conclude um, avowedly or silently that uh, however uh, men may use the light they have, they cannot be more than nominally uh, our brethren unless they have our religion, our philosophy and our methods of attaining both. He said he often recurred with delight to the conversations he had enjoyed with his Chinese friends on some of the highest uh, speculative and some of the deepest and widest practical subjects which his fellow citizens of New England were apt to think could be the business only of Protestant Christians. These American uh, merchants' observations on Oriental morals and manners had an uh, incalculable uh, right after he had said this, for it was known uh, that he had seen into hearts as well as meet uh, faces and discovered what people's minds uh, were busy about as their hands were pursuing the universal employment of uh, earning their subsistence. Unless a traveler uh, interprets by his sympathies, uh, sympathies what he says, he cannot but uh, misunderstand the greater part of that which comes under his observation. He will not be admitted uh, with freedom into the uh, retirements of domestic life. Uh, the instructive uh, commentary on all the facts of life discourse will be of a slight and superficial character. People will talk to him of the things they care least about, instead of seeking his sympathy about the affairs which are deepest in their hearts. He will be amused with the public spectacles and informed of historical and chronological, chronological uh, facts, but he will not be 
invited to weddings and christenings, he will hear no uh, laughter. Domestic sorrows will be kept as secret from him. The old folks will not pour out their stores to him, nor the children bring him their prattle. Uh, such a traveler will be no more fitted to report on morals and manners than he would be to give an account of the silver mines of Siberia by walking over the surface and uh, seeing the entrance and the uh, product. Human conduct, uh, says a philosopher, is guided by rules. Without these rules, man could not live together and they are also necessary to the response of individual minds. Robinson Crusoe could not have endured his life for a month without rules to, have, to live by. A life without purpose is uncomfortable enough but a life without um, rails would be a wretchedness which happily man is not constituted to bear. The rules by which man uh, live are chiefly drawn from the universal uh, convention, conventions about uh, right and wrong, uh, which I have mentioned as being formed everywhere under strong general influences. Uh, when sentiment is connected with these rules, they become religion, and this religion is the animating uh, spirit of all that is said and done. If the stranger cannot sympathize in the sentiment, uh, he cannot understand the religion, and without understanding the religion, he cannot uh, appreciate the spirit of words and acts. A stranger who has never felt uh, any strong political interest and cannot uh, sympathize with American sentiment about the majesty of social equality and the beauty of uh, mutual government, can never understand the political religion of the United States. And the sayings of the citizens uh, by their own firesides, the um, perorations of orators in town halls, and uh, the installations of public servants and the process of election, will all be empty sound and uh, grimes to him. He will be tempted to laugh, uh, to call the word about him mad, like uh, one who, without hearing the music, sees a room full of people being to dance. Uh, the case is the same uh, with certain Americans who have uh, no antiquarian uh, sympathies and uh, who think our uh, sovereigns uh, mad for riding to St. Stephen's uh, in the royal state uh, coach with eight uh, horses covered with wrappings and a tribe of uh, grotesque footmen. I have found uh, it an effort of um, conditions uh, to inform such observers that uh, we should not think of uh, inventing such a coach and uh, appurtenances uh, at the present day any more than we should um, the address of the Chris Hospital boys. If an unsympathizing stranger is so uh, perplexed by a mere matter of external arrangement, a royal procession or a pop popular election, um, what can he be expected to make of that which is far more important, more intricate, more miserious, um, neighborly and domestic life? If he knows and feels nothing of the religion of these, he could learn but uh, little about them, even if the roots of all the houses of a city were made transparent to him, and he could watch uh, all that is done in every parlor, kitchen and nursery in a circuit of five miles. Um, what strange things and uh, transactions must such an one think that there are in the world? What would he have uh, thought of the spectacle one day um, seen in Haiti when um, Toussaint Louverture uh, raised his mega forces before him, called out, out uh, certain men from the ranks by name and ordered them to repair to a certain spot to be immediately shot? Um, what would he have uh, thought of these certain men for crossing their arms upon their breasts? Uh, bowing their heads uh, submissively and yielding instant uh, obedience. 
he might have um, pronounced the Twisant uh, Foresh's despot and asserting so many crabbed fools, uh, while the facts were very different respect to one who knows the minds of the man. It was necessary to the uh, goodwill of a society, but lately organized out of uh, chaos, to make uh, no distinction between a uh, Negro and the uh, other uh, insurgents, and uh, these certain men were ringleaders in a revolt, uh, Tristan's nephew being one of them. Uh, this accounts for the general's uh, share in the transaction. As for the Negroes, the general was also the deliverer and object of worship uh, to people of his color. Obedience uh, to him was a rule, uh, exalted by every sentiment of uh, gratitude, ave, uh, admiration, pride and love into a religion. And a uh, Haitian of that day would no more have uh, a thought of resisting a command of Tuisan um, than of disputing a thunderstroke or an air cake. Uh, what would an unsympathizing observer make of the um, Pascal Supper? as uh, celebrated in the houses of uh, Hebrews uh, throughout the world, of the care not to break a bone of the lamb, of the company all standing, the man um, guarded and uh, showed us for a journey, and the youngest child of the household uh, invariably as he condices all for. Uh, what would the observer call it but uh, mummery if he had no feeling for the awful traditional and the religious emotion involved uh, in the symbol? Uh, what would such an uh, one think of the terrified flight of uh, two Spanish nobles from the breath of their sovereign, incurred by their having saved his beloved king from being killed by a fall from her horse? Um, what a puzzle is here, even um, when all the facts of the case are known, that the king was looking from a balcony to see his king, queen uh, mount uh, her Andalusian horse, that the horse uh, reared, plunged and uh, bolted, uh, throwing the king, uh, whose foot was uh, entangled in the stirrup, um, that she was surrounded with gentlemen who stood aloof, um, because by the law of Spain it was death, uh, to any but her li little pages to touch the person, and uh, especially the foot of the queen, and her pages were um, too young to rescue her, uh, that these two gentlemen devoted themselves to save her, and having uh, cuffed the, the home and um, extricated the royal food, fled for their um, lives from the legal wrath of the king. Um, when such a law, um, from the rule that the Queen of Spain um, has no legs, um, when such a rule, um, from the meaning that uh, the Queen of Spain is being too uh, lofty to touch the earth. Um, here we come. Uh, here we come at at uh, last to the sentiment of loyal admi admi admiration and the veneration which uh, sanitifies the law and the rule and interprets the incident. To a hearthless stranger, the whole appears a mere solemn absurdity, fit only to be set aside, as it was apparently by pardon from the king being obtained by the instant um, intercession of the queen. But uh, in the eyes of every Spaniard, the transaction was um, in all its parts, as far from absurdity as the danger of the two nobles was real and pressing. Again, what can a hurtless observer understand by the practice, almost universal in the world of celebrating the name of Hilda? The Christian parent employs a form by which uh, the infant is admitted as a lamb of uh, uh, Christian flag. The Chinese father calls his uh, kindred together to witness the conferring first of the surname, and then of the milk name, uh, some endearing uh, diminutive uh, to seize with infancy. The Muslim uh, consults an astrologer, astrologer uh, before giving a name uh, to his child, and the savage selects a um, namesake for his infant uh, from among the beasts or uh, birds, 
with uh, whose characteristic quality he would fain endow um, his offspring. Uh, what the general rule is here, exalted by universal sentiment into an act of religion. The ceremonial observer in each case um, is uh, widely different in its aspect to one who sees in it uh, merely a cumbrous way of um, transacting a matter of convenience and to another who perceives in it the initiation of a new member into the family of mankind and uh, looking forward to uh, an attempt to make provision for the future destiny of an unconscious and uh, helpless being. Um, thus it will be through the whole range of the traveler's observation, if he be full of uh, sympathy, um, everything he sees will be instructive and the most important uh, matters will be the most clearly revealed. If he be unsympathizing, the most important things will be hidden from him, and the uh, symbols in which uh, every society abounds will be only absorbed or uh, trivial forms. Uh, the stranger will be wise to conclude when he sees uh, anything seriously done, which appears uh, to him uh, insignificant or uh, ludicrous uh, that there is more in it uh, than he uh, perceives from uh, some deficiency of knowledge or feeling of his own. The other way in which uh, hurt is found to answer to hurt is too obvious to require to belong uh, dwelt upon. Men not only see according to the light uh, they shed from their own breasts, whether it be the sunshine of uh, generosity or uh, the hell fames of bad passions, but they attract to themselves uh, spirits like their own. The very same persons appear very differently to a traveller who calls into exercise all their best qualities, and to one who has an affinity uh, with their worst, but it is a yet more important consideration that actually different elements of society will arrange themselves uh, around the observer according to the um, skepticism or fate of uh, his uh, temper, and the purity or uh, depravity of uh, his taste, and uh, elevation or insign insignificance uh, of his uh, object. Um, the Americans, uh, somewhat nettled with the injustice of English travelers' reports of their uh, country, have jokingly proposed to take uh, lodgings uh, in uh, uh, wapping for some uh, free bred American vixen of low tastes and uh, coarse uh, manners, and employ her to write an account of English morals and manners uh, from what she might see in a year's abode uh, in the choice uh, located uh, selected for her. This would be no great um, exaggeration of the process. Um, of the observation of foreigners, uh, which is uh, perpetually going on. Why should uh, gamesters um, know of the philanthropista of the society they uh, pass through, or uh, the profligate of the real state of uh, domestic life? Um, what can the moral skeptic report of religious or uh, philosophical uh, confessorship in any nation? or uh, the sordid trader of the higher kinds of intellectual cultivation, or the denny of the extent and administration of charity. Uh, it may be said that uh, neither can be a philanthropic traveller, uh, the missionary, uh, see otherwise uh, than partially for want of knowledge of the word, that uh, persons of uh, Zober habit uh, can learn nothing that is going on in the moral depths of society, and the good are um, actually scuffed at for their absence from many scenes of uh, human life, and their uh, supposed ignorance of many things in human nature. But it is certain that the best part of every man's uh, mind is far more a uh, spice man of uh, himself than the board, and that the characteristic of a society in like manner are to be traced in the wisest and the most, uh, most uh, genial of its um, pervading ideas and uh, common transactions 
instead of those disgraceful uh, ones which are common to all. Uh, swindlers, drunkards, people of uh, low tastes and bad passions are found in every country and never characterize um, a nation. While the reverence of men in America, uh, the pursuit of spectacular um, truth in Germany, philanthropic enterprise in France, love of freedom in Switzerland, popular education in China, domestic purity in Norway, each of these great moral treaties is a star on the forehead of the nation. Uh, goodness and simplicity are indissolubly uh, united. The bad are the most sophisticated of the world over, and the good the least. Uh, it may be taken as a rule that the best qualities of a people, as of an individual, uh, are the most characteristic. What is really best being tested, not by prejudice, but principle. He has the best chance of um, ascertaining um, these best qualities, who has them in himself, and uh, he uh, who has them not many as well pretend to give a picture of a metropolitan city by showing a map of its uh, drainage um, as a report of a nation after an interco intercourse uh, with its knaves and its uh, profligates. Um, to stand on the highest uh, Pinnacle is the best way of obtaining an accurate general view in contemplating a society as well as a city. So, in a writing title, how to observe Martin wrote about moral philosophy and so many requisites, and we have read about the moral requisites. First of all, uh, the rejection of prejudice and compassion are prominent in Martin's writing. I agree with the author that changing one's personality is a slow process and the first step is to recognize uh, the problem. The problem. Uh, in my view, uh, however, people's thinking and personalities are much more complex than that and uh, recognizing uh, the problem is not enough uh, to start the process of change. In my view, the recognition and acknowledgement of a problem does not uh, presuppose and the uh, individual wants uh, to solve it or change it. I believe um, that Martinus's work contains a number of values that should be given at least as much prominence today as they are in the author's work. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, speak about um, that sentence uh, when Martin wrote uh, um, about that hurts, uh, generous or selfish, pure or gross, gay or sad, will understand and therefore be likely to report of only uh, their like. Uh, well, uh, in my opinion, um, the the uh, author is um, trying to uh, show that uh, there can be uh, generous and um, selfish people in society, um, but um, that it is uh, up to the uh, person himself to decide um, uh, which group uh, a person belongs to. But uh, um, once uh, he has decided, um, he will uh, only be able to identify uh, with and understand uh, like-minded uh, uh, people. And um, in this way, uh, the, the author also suggests uh, that uh, um, positive perceptions and uh, thinking um, practically um, exclude um, negative um, thought uh, from a person's uh, thinking. Um, however, he also points uh, out that uh, there is the uh, same human heart uh, everywhere, so um, everyone um, has the the same opportunity to choose um, 
um, positivity or um, negativity. So it is also important to uh, think about uh, the dangers of uh, uh, attracting a spirit uh, like uh, his or her own. Um, and finally, um, be warned that uh, the traveler um, should uh, not find uh, everything uh, uh, amazing or terrific, uh, mysterious, uh, picturesque or uh, even classical. Um, so this was our uh, podcast. Um, enjoy it.